going on everybody welcome back to another episode of trey codes as always my name is trey and today is thursday april 21st 2022 um i'm currently in a whole nother city outside of atlanta i'm in birmingham alabama at an airbnb right now i had some time off work so i figured i'd take a little excursion to go somewhere quiet for a little bit and with me being off right now i have some extra time so i figured why not go ahead and shoot another video so today's topic that I want to discuss is a platform called Rowy, R-O-W-Y. And Rowy is pretty much a way that you can kind of manage your database with more flexibility, give you more functionality, um, a, a sense of ease when it comes to handling um, cloud functions. It's all kind of like a, a just an in, enclosed package to allow you to handle everything that maybe would take a little bit longer if you were trying to do it natively in Firebase or Firestore or whatever it was. So um, I've been using it for a couple apps of mine. Um, it's pretty easy to set up and I haven't really ran to any issues yet. So I figured it'd be good to kind of discuss it and hopefully this can help you as well when it comes to managing your database. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So I've come over to rowweed.com. I created my profile already. And when I set up my profile, it asked me to specify which project in Firebase do you want to make reference to. So I already specified Critic, one of my mobile apps, as the project that I'll be referencing in this example. As you can see here in the top, this is in the URL, it says Critic-A9E44, so it already knows which project we'll be talking about. And this is the Cloud Firestore representation of my project. So the goal here is to create a table in Rowy that will reference this table right here. So in Rowy, first thing we need to go ahead and select is new table. And it's first going to ask what the table type is. We'll keep that as primary collection. Then we need to specify which collection we're talking about. As I said before, the collection we're, fo we're focused on today is this users table. Um, the underscore users table, uh, not underscore, lowercase users. We'll come back here, select the collection, hit users. Then we need to go to display. We'll leave this alone because we want our table name to be users, table ID users. The access control is going to be strictly for admin. We don't want anyone else modifying this, but if you want to, you can have it to where editors or viewers can also modify this data. For now, we'll keep it as admin. Then we'll come down to auditing. This is optional. You don't have to touch anything here. Um, if you want to add the created by and updated by keys is optional. We'll just leave that alone for this example. Then for the columns, we'll leave that empty right now because what we're gonna do is actually specify which columns we want manually. So we'll hit create. As you can see here, it says get started. There is existing data in the Firestore collection users. You can import that existing data to this table. So we're going ahead, going, going to go ahead and select import. Now you can see all the fields that I currently have on the Firestore collection. So we'll hit select all, hit continue. Rename columns. So this is going to rename them just more case sensitive. So as you can see, the field names are lowercase, but we'll have them capitalized here. We'll hit continue on this. This is selecting the column types, but we'll let it handle that by default. Then this is a preview of the data that we have. So this is essentially a table showing the emails, FCM tokens, IDs, image URLs of everything in my current collection. So we'll go ahead and select finish. And there we have it. We now have our table of this data. So if we look at, let's see, this user right here, this user's email, we have this user in the database as well. See, so this is essentially the way that you would create a reference to your collection in Firestore to Rowy. So now anything that I modify in here, if I wanna change a name, if I wanna change an image, if I wanna change an ID, whatever it is, I can now manually do it from here versus having to go to Firestore and do it myself. So it's a pretty simple and nifty way to kind of modify the data. So that's essentially how you set up the table. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and explain how we can add some extra functionality to disabled users of the account. So we have our ROWE table set up. Now what we want to do is demonstrate how we can enable and disable users who have been authenticated to the app. So if you're familiar with Firebase, pretty sure you know about authentication. It's the way that you can keep record of people who have been authenticated into your app. Right here is the authentication section of my Critic, Critic app and all the users who have been using the app. So what we want to do is we want to be able to disable a an account and enable an account in ROWE. You can do that manually in Firebase, but I'm going to show the ease of using it with ROWE. So if we go over to ROWE, we have our users here. In order to add this functionality, we need to add an action called disable account. And we're going to specify all that right now. So first we need to select add column. We'll call this disable account. Then we'll specify it as an action. As you can see here, these are all the different types of values that you can specify for a column. But for this right here, we'll just use the action. Click next. Now we need to specify the required roles and the required fields. So as specified earlier, we only want admin to be able to have this type of functionality. If you want the editor and viewer to do it as well, you can select those, but we'll have, we'll leave it for admin just for now. The required fields, it's pretty much saying these are the fields that need to be on that object when I make the action to that user in order for it to execute. Now, I don't need any of these fields in order to execute an enabling or disabling of an account, so I'll leave this blank for now. The confirmation, we wanna run the action immediately. You can also ask the user for confirmation or ask the user for input in a form. Finally, well not finally, we have third, we have the action. And you can either specify a callable, which is a Google, Google Cloud function that you already deployed, or you can do a script, which is what we'll be doing, where you can manually type in some JavaScript code to execute your function. So we'll specify a script. And as you can see here, it gives us some boilerplate code. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna write our action within this code block right here. So, to save us some time, I already have the code necessary for disabling an account. So I'll just copy this and plug this in here. So what this is doing is it's calling the auth object saying, let's update this user specified by the reference ID or the UID. And we're gonna set the disabled field to true. Once we do that, we return a success message and it says account is now disabled. Well, the username account is disabled. So that's how we would enable it. Another cool thing that you can do with ROWE is you can also specify that the user can redo this function. So we'll select that. That means that they can disable again, even though they really wouldn't need to disable twice. But I'm sure you can think of a function where you would need to call it again. Then you can also specify that a user can undo. So what this is going to do is we can specify another function to do the opposite of what we just did. So since we disable an account, we can then add a function to enable the account again. So we'll specify user can undo. Now we have this undo action, which is going to give us another code block and we need to specify our en enable script right here. So I got that over here as well. Copy this in. So this does the exact same thing as the disable account, but it sets the disable field to false and it'll say username account has been reactivated. Finally, we come down to customization and you can customize the button icons with an emoji, but that's really UI specific. We don't need that for right now. So let's hit update. All right. So now you can see that we have this extra column that says disable account. So let's go ahead and execute this by hitting the play button. All right, it says this account is now disabled. So if we go and search for this user in Firestore authentication, Firebase authentication, I'm sorry. We'll put this UID in here, hit enter. As you can see, this account has been disabled, okay? So the icon now turns from a play button to whatever that button is. I'm not sure what that icon is, but it's saying go back. So if we hit this again, this account has been reactivated, all right? 
So let's refresh this. As you can see now, the account is been enabled again. So this, so this is how it makes it very easy to enable and disable accounts using Firestore and Rowy. Well, using Rowy, I should say. Um, so in the next part, I'll show you how to actually delete users from Rowy. Okay, so back at our table again, similar to last time, in order to create a new action, we need to add another column. This time we'll be deleting users. Just a heads up, I won't actually delete any users from my app because this is a live app, but I'll demonstrate how you can set it up and you can go from there. So we'll go here to add another column. This time we'll call it delete account. Oops. And we'll specify it as an action again. Specify the roles as admin, leave the required fields alone, run the action immediately, set it as a script. Then we'll come over here. I have the code written for deleting an account. So what this code block does, it calls the auth object, says delete users specified by the reference ID or that UID. Then it specifies a message or displays a message, I should say, this username account has been successfully deleted. So you wouldn't really want to redo this because redoing it would mean adding it back in, but once you delete that data, you don't have it anymore, so you can't really redo it, and to undo it would be the same, I'm sorry, to undo it would be to add that user back in, but you can't really do that. To redo it would mean to delete them again, but they're already gone from the database, so there isn't really a point of doing that. So I'll leave both of these as unselected. And as earlier, we'll leave the customization alone. So as you can see here, we have our action for deleting account. So if I wanted to delete this user SBNDolio at Hotmail, I would click this play button and it would delete that user. So keep that in mind. Whenever you want to delete a user, you can manually go into authentication and do it that way. Or you can just come to this table and delete that same user, making it a little bit easier. So that's essentially how you would delete a user account. Next, I'll show you how we can export the table data into a CSV file. All right, back at our table again. Now, with, now that we understand how to disable, enable, and delete accounts, the next thing that I would like to demonstrate is how we can export all this data. Because of course, when it comes to Firestore, you can have millions of records, but Sometimes you may want to have it as, you know, a CSV or a .json file just as a backup in case something happens with Firestore, you can then import that data back into your Firestore database. So in order to export it, all we have to do is come up to this button right here that says export slash download. We'll select this. Then we need to specify the columns that we want to export. I'll go ahead and select all, but I'll disable this disable account and delete account because these are actions. We don't really need these when it comes to making a backup of our data. We'll, we'll hit done. And then you select the export type. We have CSV, TSV, and .json. I'm gonna use CSV right here. Click export, preparing the file. Now you can see we have it downloaded. Let's go ahead and open it up. And as you can see here, we have our data in a CSV file. So this is, yep, yeah, this is all the data that we currently have. So let's say we needed to perform a backup. What we could then do is we could save this file as, you know, April 21st, 2022. And then we can back that up by importing this data back into Firestore. And that would be how we would, you know, perform backups to make sure that in case anything happens with our data, we're always secure. So this is probably the easiest step when it comes to managing your data from what I've discussed today. So keep that in mind that the import and export seamlessly easy and very beneficial when it comes to managing your apps. So there you have it. All right, so today we discussed how we can set up a table in Rowy, how we can enable and disable accounts, how we can delete user accounts, and, and how we can export the data to whatever file type that we specify. So with that said, this is really just the tip of the iceberg as far as what everything Rowie can provide for you. 
but these are just some of the essentials so that you can kind of get the, the ball rolling and understand how beneficial a platform such as Rowie can be for your Firebase apps. As always, if this video was helpful, please like, comment, subscribe, and let me know of any type of video that you would love to see me discuss in the future. Until next time, I'll see you later. Have a great day.